Hi, everybody. Welcome. I am Patty Negri, and over here in the back, she'll be here any second, is my dear friend, Patty Stanger. And welcome to Love, Sex, Magic. Look at Mr. Flirty. Ah, here she comes. Look at Mr. Flirty. Oh, look at Mr. Flirty. It is the season. Wait, it hi. Is this is hi. Patty. No, you might need help adjusting your light. Okay, push can you that, adjust push my that light? Back, push that back. You got, okay. This is live, you guys. Okay, sorry. Okay, I hope that person okay, did not know that I showed put somebody a laser. On. Okay, wait, where are my, where are my, no, these yeah, are not my earplugs. I wait. know, you, we have to share a pair. Oh, we have to They're share clean. a pair? Yeah. Wait, which side, left or right? Oh, no. This uh, goes on uh, the right. Okay. Okay, hi. Hi, everybody. Can Patty you, and Patty. Can you hear me? tell us apart. I, oh, there's nobody talking but us. Okay. <laughs> it's just okay. us. Okay, hi, guys. So, I'm so excited to be here with Patty Negri. She is my witch, and she is my high priestess. I've been in magic since I was a child. I have studied with pretty much everybody, and nobody was good. There's a lot of bad witches out there. So make sure you, you investigate before you do anything. But this is a white, pure, <laughs> centered heart witch that's going to teach us all how to bring love into our lives. We need a little extra oomph in COVID. Um, we're stuck inside, isolated. There's not a lot of bars open. When you go to the restaurants, it's mostly couples. And I know girls, you're freaking out about those apps. But <laughs> let me tell you something. Last summer, uh, Patty was working with me. And I manifested someone who ended up becoming my best friend. He was actually somebody I dated. He went back to his ex-girlfriend. And sometimes you have mixed, mixed, uh, like missed starts, I would yes, say. Starts. Like, so now we're in the throes of attracting a new person. And the energy started to move this week. And I started getting a bunch of dates. And I ain't young. So, um, she ain't old. I, well, she's, <laughs> She'll always be young. Uh, you know, so I needed a little oomph in my step. And so to take my magical gain up, up like, you know, 10, 10 knots, um, Patty kind of taught me. So I go to magic school once a week. Mm -hmm. She comes to my house. She teaches me privately. And there's a lot of things in my house that are, you know, crystals and oils and powders. And I'm really into candle magic. So we're going to do a spell today that's going to teach you how to bring love in for balance. We are. And, and yeah. what better? I will bring this magic out. So she's amazing at magic. But why not have the world's most famous, the world's best <laughs> matchmaker at finding love for people all over the world? So together... You're going to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend yeah. or whatever but it is that you want. if you're fluid, non-binary, transgender, um, if you are somebody that likes bisexuality, if you're like somebody who's gay, if you're just straight, it doesn't matter. Love is love. So in the rainbow of the scheme of things, everything's about love. Whatever you choose to do, as long as you don't hurt anyone with it. So we are going to teach you how to pull out of the universe the right person for you. Because I believe love is like, um, kind of like the animals in the wild. We have, we send off a signal. Some people say we send off a pheromone and then the people stop coming. But if your mind is not correct, your, your magic won't work. So without, you know, having your mind congruent to your desire, as they say in law of attraction, magic is the next level. And you, you know, we always say there's a sexual thing we, I say, which I learned on Salem, the TV series. Ah. If for anybody who's watched the Salem, which TV series really good, there can be no magic without arousal. Exactly. It's the passion that fuels everything. Should we talk about the passion spell? We can talk spell? about passion. We did, a pa we did a passion spell last week and I got angry and she called me. She says, that means the magic's working because there's a fine line between passion and anger. Right? Exactly. It is Valentine's Day. So okay, I'm here, I'm gonna, do, I've got her. Look how pretty these glasses Beautiful are. They're from Patty's glasses. house. Glasses. Yeah. So, so we're going to have a we're little gonna, shampoo. We're going to do a little bit, a of, little tiny champagne bit of champagne and champagne. toast you guys for Valentine's Day. Exactly. Here we go. Wait, here, put this down. Yeah, just put it down. So we ching, ching, Cheers. ching. Cheers. Here's to love. You Here's guys. to love. Here's to your new guy, girl. Uh, if you're non in a thruple, quadruple, swinger, sang, I don't care what. Whatever, as long whatever. as it's love. See, the light is better now. Tyler, what? can you pull her light back a little bit there? Again, this is live. You know, we figure it can out we as toast? we go. Okay, let's we can go. toast. Okay, toast. Okay. Yeah. Look at me. I, okay. from, from, my, from my tribe. Ah. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. Little Dom. Thank you. Dom oh. is so good. It mm. is so good. Thank you, Rob. And, uh, and this is so good for my diet. A box of seeds. You can't chocolate. eat that. You're she's on the HCG diet right now. Like she needs it. Like what a joke. Uh, right? uh, no, well, we can have one. Okay. I need chocolate, but that's okay. Okay. I'll, I'll you, have she yours. She's gonna have the box. I will have yours. Ah. Okay. So before we get started, uh, we have. I, I
Love that you guys are here and more people coming in. We do want your questions. We I might have to questions. use, my, I've seen your moment. I might have to use glasses just, just so I can see. Very little. Yeah. Here. I hope there's no glare, but we're gonna, we're gonna take your questions. So what I'd like you to do is like, bring me really good questions. Don't take up the time from the next caller. If you get too specific, we don't have the time. Yeah. We're gonna get right to the point and give you what you need. If we have the same question again, we won't, we won't do it again. Right. And before that, before they do, why don't we bring a little magic to the space, to okay. the room, wherever okay. you are. what do you are. want to do? So everybody, take a deep breath in. Hold it, hold it. Exhale. Now breathe in pure love, whatever that means to you. Breathe it in. Heart chakra, open up. Yes. And exhale. I work elementally. So we have the east winds blow through this space, blow away any blocks, blow away anything that gets in the way of you really finding love, whether that's self-love, love for a partner, love anything. May the east winds blow through and open it up with new thoughts, new focus, new clarity. And may the south, the fire, that's the passion. May that fire burn in your belly, burn in your groins and bring that beautiful love to you. So I call in the fire. And now we want to call in the West, the sweet waters of the West, water, emotion. It's almost 60% of our body. It's a sweet tear coming down, a tear of love. So call in the waters to wash away anything negative and to fill us up with pure love. And lastly, we want to call in the North, Mother Earth herself, that we keep us grounded on this planet while we are in this human form. Keep us grounded, but let us reach all the way up to the heavens and to the stars and touch the heavens and the stars with love. And we circle around. We are creating sacred space where we are and where you are, and it is filled with nothing but love. So mode it be. So mode it be. So I have to bring in a present that Patty gave me. So a few weeks ago, Patty was like, who's your deity? And I'm like, what's that? <laughs> and I don't know why no witch has taught me this. I mean, I knew about Ath Ath Athena, Aphrodite, but they weren't really, like I'm more Archangel Michael kind of person. And she said, we'll figure out what you want. And then I, I she told me about Hecate, mm -hmm. and which is the goddess of all witches, you know? Yes. And so she brought me this cute little Hecate. Look at that. Is that not a Isn't gorgeous? Beautiful? So ever since I made an altar at the front door, I put garlic, flowers, keys, because she loves keys and she loves dogs. You know, she's the goddess with the hounds. She's never been married and doesn't have children. So for those who are like never been married, don't have kids, feel like the boat has sat, you know passed you by, she's your goddess. I'm telling you. And she works fast. 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 She's a she, powerful. Like, like when we're going to teach you candle magic today, it's candle magic is like a weather report of what's going on in your love life or your money or your health or whatever. She was working with me in the last few weeks and man, she kicked butt. So I have to give her a big kiss. So I love my Hecate. And some people call it Hecate, 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 Hecate. Hecate. Potato, I go back potato. and forth sometimes. I, you know, cause I keep asking her, which way does she want me to call her? And she said both. So I don't, I didn't get, you know, that I can't call her either or also she talks to me. I go to sleep at night and you can hear her voice. I'm Claire audience. For those who don't watch Millionaire Matchmaker, I, I am a psychic, practicing psychic for, I don't know, a long ass time. And so she will talk to me. So if you do call on her or any other deity, you'll know their voice like it's pretty distinctive mm -hmm. when you channel and you go to sleep at night. You might have dreams or, um, Patty, talk about the water next to the bed because that's really important, I think. Here is a really good thing for you to do. I call it dream school. If you want to do some work while you're asleep, it's really good to do work while you're asleep, especially psychic work, deity work, working with gods, finding, calling in your love, talking to your spirit guides. In the daytime, we can, of course, do it, but we get in the way, that left chatty brain, I can't do that, that's not real. That's When you're asleep, that that's not in the way. So put a glass of water, not champagne, drink the champagne, put a glass of water by the side of the bed and charge it. Say, I wanna talk to Hecate, I wanna talk to my spirit guides, I wanna talk to my ancestors, I wanna talk to my higher self or God or Jesus or whatever works like, for like, you. It, whenever you, like there's elementals, there's gnomes, you know, there's fairies. Uh, fairies, like for those who love fairies, for those who watch True Blood, you know what fairies are. But um, there's all these different information out in the universe and you can actually pick up a supernatural list of beings on Google, which will explain all the different ones, good past, you know, doesn't matter. 
you know, dark, light, whatever. I wouldn't call in the dark, but you know what I'm saying? And right. ask for that. So like the Archangel Chamuel works on love. That's yes. that's what that's the specialty of that Archangel. So call in love. So charge the water. Put it down by the side of the bed and then ask for something. And it'll come in dream time. And sometimes it'll just come in downloads. Like you'll wake up. If you have a set time you wake up, put it, put your alarm for 10 minutes before when that first alarm goes off. Instead of, I have to get up. I don't have to get up. Give me something, give me clarity, focus, and direction for today and go back to sleep. You're still in a different brainwave state. When the real alarm goes right. off in 10 minutes, you will have clarity, focus, and direction or whatever you ask for. Grab a pencil, write down. You will be surprised what you write. You the you can't believe the stuff that gets downloaded. Um, I got the aura ring last week, mm. so I've been using it because it gives me my REM. Uh, a really good friend of mine taught me how to get better sleep at night. And then when Patty told me to put the water next to my bed, which I get fresh water every night, but I put a rose quartz in yes. for love. And I put my hands over it and I channel what I want. Then I asked Hecate to come in and uh, you want to talk about the dragon? We'll talk sure. about the dragon too. So Hecate comes in and she'll kind of give me information. And sometimes when I wake up in the morning and I'm lucid and I'm not just so ready to get up, she'll download what my day is going to be like. I had a problem with a friend last week, a male friend, and we were not getting along at all. And Hecate can be a vengeful goddess. So you have to be careful. Like if you, if you, you have to be careful of how you speak to her. You must be respectful at all times. If she's your goddess, you don't get any other goddesses. Like this yeah. is the only one. And so... I told her I had a problem with him last week. Things didn't go very well for him. So then he came back to me and we and I said, I need a harmony, harmony between us. And we did a candle for harmony and it worked. So she works fast, but be prepared to be dedicated to her. Right. And if you're not ready for that, that's okay too. Yeah. If you don't want to go, like, I'm scared of this witchy stuff. That's yeah. okay too. Work with your higher self. Work with your angels. Work with your guides. Talk about work the, with the so tribe. the first thing Patty did when she came to my house, she goes, do you believe in dragons? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm Game of Thrones all the way. And she's <laughs> like, no, 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 no. I have to give you a dragon. So she gives me this baby little miniature dragon. Serena, my dragon's upstairs. I should have brought her down. She would have liked this. And she goes, put a little bit of drink out for her, whether it's water, wine, Red Bull, and you'll know what she likes and what she doesn't. You put her on her on your altar and then you tell her to work for you. And it could be a male, female dragon. So I named her Serena. She told me her name was Serena. And then basically I used to give her lots of wine. When she got too <laughs> drunk, she fell over. She would drink it in one day. And, and that is scientifically not real. Like in other words, there's no way somebody, so the water could evaporate the wine. I switched her to Red Bull and now she does all the work for me. I just say, hey, go get me this, go do that. Blah, 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 blah. And now she's moving like the wind. That is the first person I know to give Red Bull to their dragon. I thought of it. Ah. I used to give her water. She's like, eh. I'm like, okay, I gave you Diet Coke. Eh. I give you, I gave her too much wine. She became a wino. So Happens. now I'm like, I need a halfway point, And that was Red Bull. And how, what you're doing, what you're doing is you're creating a fetish, a, a real living entity out of an inanimate object. We do it all the time with the lucky cat, the rub the Buddha's belly, um, or my lucky this, my lucky point. Right. So you have to give it a name. You have to give it a job. Personal assistant is the best job because who doesn't need one? And then every day it could do something different. Right. You literally are going to breathe life into and, your and dragon. If you, and if you ask them, like at first you have to blow on it, but if you ask them what you want and they're not doing it, either you're not connecting to your uh dragon you're not feeding it love you gotta love it you gotta act like it's your child so i realized when i wasn't talking to it every day like a plant my mom is a horticulturist before she died she could make any plant grow in the desert and she used to talk to the plants all the time and i'd be like what are you talking to the plants for she's like they're people they're humans they're they're they've got feelings just like people and so i started doing it with her talking to her every day, giving her a drink, petting her, just like a dog. Yeah. And the more love I gave, the more she worked for me. So the secret to magic is to believe magic is real. You have to, if you don't believe it, we, there's a, in, in psychology, it's called mind, body, spirit. There's 20,000 books around about it. I talk about it all the time. You have to, you'll never surpass your own belief system. If you don't think you'll ever have a lover, guess what? You won't. If you think I'm going to have the best lover, you will get it. Mind, body, we have to take action. We have to get off the couch. And the spirit is the magic behind it. Whether that's a prayer, whether that's an affirmation or a vision board or a spell working or a candle, that's the battery that makes it go. And the, the dragon can be your spirit behind it. Right. Now, a person in there, I just wanted, before it goes away, they that they were somebody told them to go talk, talk to Hakate to work with Hakate and now they're nervous. You don't need to be nervous. No. You don't need to be nervous. No. You she don't. is so loving. Um, she's suffered great pain. 
if you read the history of Hecate, you'll understand how Zeus made her go down to the underworld to get mm -hmm. the palace. Mm -hmm. Which one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which one? I don't remember. Okay. Somebody with so a key. Zeus, some one of the the daughters of one of the gods was stuck in the underworld, and she went down and she got her out. And so she is one of those that hates injustice. She's great in legal problems. Okay, she wants to make sure everybody finds love and is happy, and she sacrificed her own needs to help those less fortunate. So although she's got a temper, but who doesn't? Because look at me. Hello, millionaire matchmaker. Um, she's on the side of right. Yeah, she's, she's on the on side of right. She's a beautiful god and a powerful god. And, and if you look at her, so she has eyes in the back of her head and two heads. So she's always seeing all. She is the witch. She's the goddess of all the witches. So when the witches need help, they go to her. Yes. So that's one of the things you should know about her. Um, I also think that she is a pure heart. And that's important to me. Beautiful heart. Uh, 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 I love take question. confidence questions, confidence questions about having confidence in your magic. Oh, look at that one. That's a scary one. What would uh, you do if a banshee screamed at you? If I would, I would not scream back because anything negative wants you to get angry and wants yeah. you to get scared. Don't engage. Don't, don't like, en do you know how I always teach you a bad boyfriend should not be engaged with because they need attention. Ignore, deflect, ignore, delete, delete, delete. Yeah. And just like be a parent, be a teacher, like, nope, my house, my thing. No yelling in my house. Be like very disciplinarian with love and, and go away. Just nope. Sorry. Sorry. And they guess oh, what? They look, go away. We have a male witch here and he uses Hikate as his goddess. So you don't have to be no, female to call upon a goddess. Absolutely not. You want, to tell the story? you want to tell the story about the house that burned down? No. <laughs> There's a great story. But, but, but there's a great story. When but, you switch goddesses, she's not a fan. Yeah. So don't switch goddesses. Some of the male witches and or Wallachs, whatever they're calling themselves, I the best ones I know, actually, some of them are total Hikate. Um, there's beautiful There's a book. great book. Wait, yes. Hold on, let me get yes. Book. And he there's is. There's a great book that Patty Lee gave me. It's very complicated. But for those who are advanced, this book, you want to, how do you say it even? Libra Catonia. Libra Catonia. It's by my friend Jeff. Colin, and it's beautiful, and there's beautiful magic in it. This mm -hmm. is Hecate. My friend Sal at Crooked Path in Los Angeles. There's a lot of people who dedicate to Hecate, and you don't have to be afraid of her. Now, how I do it with deity, because I'm more elemental than deity-driven, I work with deities, but I don't worship under, I work with. So you can, you find your path. There's not a one truth. You find your truth to it. Um, but let's talk a little bit of love. I think, love. I think we should move into love. Yeah. So... Um, Love is undefinable. Um, chemistry leads the party. Um, anybody who tells you chemistry is not the first line of defense is lying. Um, you know, everybody's definition of chemistry and sex is different. You've, we have a new indigenous male to the market known as the sapiosexual. This is brand new. You'll see this on, on, on all the apps where they are intellectually stimulated. It's kind of an unusual thing because sex comes second to them. They're the epitome of no sex before monogamy. They'll wait give you commitment, and then you'll have sex like three months later if you get lucky. So, um, but most guys want to get laid. I mean, like it's simple Sally syrup. And the secret is to pull in a partner whose mind, body, and spirit is congruent to your desire as far as your heart chakra goes. So you want someone who really loves you, only sees you. I kind of call this past life at first sight, like you've known each other before in a past life. So calling in somebody who you've recognized to be a true love and maybe they've been just getting divorced or maybe they weren't ready for you at the time or maybe you know you married someone else first and now you're moving on to someone else because you changed your attitude and your, your vision of what you want that's kind of like what you want to call in. you want to call in your true love and as we say for the highest good for the highest good yeah. always for the highest good for your highest good and sometimes you don't know you go for it um, somebody asked a question earlier. I would like your millionaire. How do I get the guy back? Somebody's lost oh, okay. somebody. Okay. So that's called an SP in law of attraction manifestation terms. Like my SP, my specific person and I are not together. So there's two ways to look at it. So if we did it in a law of attraction way, and then we brought magic in magic would assist the law of attraction. So you love this person, you feel connected to this person, but you don't know if that person's for your highest good. There might be a better person that you don't know. And God is the ultimate matchmaker. So you really are asking the universe to bring you, if not equal or better. If I can't have him or her, can I have a better version of that person? So you could take that person in your mind's eye. 
before you go to bed, you would be laying in an uncomfortable position because you don't want to fall asleep when you do this for 20 minutes before you go to bed. And you would visualize having the most wonderful love. You want to get married. You want to have kids. You want to live in the big house, anything. And you would go to the end of your life, living in the end to say, it's already happened. Mm -hmm. Because if it's already happened, that means it will happen. Now, if you're going to do magic, you would assist it with various different spell techniques, such as like today we're going to do a candle spell. <laughs> but you'd find the spell that works with it. And then you would keep repeating it every day with an affirmation like I, me and so and so are in a happily, wonderful, loving marriage, let's say. And I'd always put now at the end of the sentence to activate it within. Now. Right. And you can say some motive B. You can say amen. You can use anything you want. Aho. Yeah, anything. Right. And the, sick, the, the trick, though, is 500 to 2,000 times a day saying it throughout your day. You can actually get one of those rings from Amazon that they have at the clubs to count how many people go through the door. And you, every time you say it, push it. And it goes really fast. I've done this a million times. So when you're saying it every day, it becomes your mantra. Kind of like transcendental meditation, we have a mantra and it just goes over and over again. And it starts to seep into your subconscious. When the yeah. subconscious kicks in, the spell is just going to turbocharge it to bring it down from the heavens down to earth. Yep, because we create everything here. Again, right. what, mind, body, spirit is exactly what she's saying. In spell working, it's called creation working dispatch. Creation. I want to do a love spell. Oh, Friday. Friday is the day of love. Venus. Of Venus. Venus. So yeah. I'm going to do it on Friday. Um, okay, I'm going to use... Oh, rose petals. Rose petals are the their love flower, the highest vibration, maybe some oil. Again, this is the mind. You're setting it up. Which you're, I want to bring in somebody who's funny and rich. I want to bring in somebody who's whatever. Inter inter she's saying inner quest. I, I know you're going to say six foot two, hot, ripped, whatever. But really the inner, I want someone who's nice to me. If I had somebody who was mean, like my last ex, not nice. So I want somebody who doesn't have anger. I want somebody sweet and kind and loving. If I get sick, he brings me chicken soup. He rubs my feet. You know, you want somebody who's got that inner love that just makes you glow because that's really the secret to us. Because let me tell you something. Uh, this last guy I went out with, and Dave, if you're listening, you know who it is. Um, <laughs> it's his, I don't know if he's listening. But I wasn't attracted to him in the beginning. And I thought I had to have six foot two ripped, no hair in the chest and the whole enchilada. You guys have watched the show. You know who David was, my ex. And then he comes in, he's like six foot, scruffy, Bay Area, Silicon guy. He's a builder. He's got a beard. I never dated anyone with a beard. Cute. He's got salt and pepper hair. He's got a hairy chest. I was like, what? And then four dates in, I was sold. So you can't put like, you know, everything about you. Because the universe can shift you at any moment. And the higher you climb spiritually, the more your taste changes. Yep. Yeah, completely. You're changing. That's why love has to, you guys have to work together and learn together. Now, Willow has a question. Why do men suddenly experience fear when they actually start to feel closeness? <laughs> Let Patty answer. Patty's an expert on that one. Go, Patty. <laughs> well, again, we all have our baggage. We understand that. We all have our fears. And it's usually our own self-sabotage, a fear of being rejected. So we're going to reject before we get rejected or we're, or we're not really worthy. We're not really good enough for that person. So I'm going to do something to make them not want me. Um, and so often, I mean, there's a billion, as, as many as there is people, there's many different reasons. Um, but I want to give you one, the tiniest little magical thing before we get into candle work. I call it tickle and tease. Tickle and tease technique. It's magic in the easiest form. Because remember, emotion is what what connects us. We have cords between all of us. We, we always, we use the terminology, cut the cord, no strings attached. Oh, and the cords are like love and jealousy and fear and unworthiness and all these things. That, and we all have all those cords, but the, and sometimes the, those scary ones, like I'm not good enough for them or whatever that is, is just as big, or I've been betrayed by other people and it's not going to yeah, work for it, If it's, if it's a higher love and you're getting really intensely like close and then all of a sudden it shifts, like you, you just like who who drop who turned the lights out? Where is right. that guy? It's because something triggered him from his past to say, ooh, ooh, I'm letting my guard down because men don't like to let their guard down. And then they're like, oh, I don't know if I can go here. Yeah, and they start scary. to doubt. So what you do in this situation is you pull back. When they pull back, you pull back stronger and you remove your energy, you remove your aura from their field. They might be getting a hit off of you like 
You give them lots of love over text. You fill up their love tank. You tell them how hot they are, how great they are in business. And the more you pull back and stop giving it to them, the more they will figure out. Don't take away their solutionizing process. Because if you end up doing all the solutions, you become the alpha and they become the beta. And you don't want that. You don't want that. So let me go back to that. Thank you. That is brilliant. That tickle and tease, it's a technique. And any conversation with the person, and it works on non-love, it works on people you work with, with a positive memory that evokes a positive emotion that's attached to you as you are walking away. Literally, it could be like, oh my gosh, Patty, I saw this picture of what we did last Christmas. It was so much fun. Okay, see you later. You don't want to say, wasn't that great? Or do you remember right. it? Don't be negative no. words into the all moment. They yeah. All you want them to do in their head for one second, go that, go that little memory. You've just attached this form fuzzy card to them and you are walking away. So instead of like, oh, I'm afraid of that person. I'm not good enough for that person. She, that person I've slipped right. in my rituals where I doubted what was happening. Um, right before I attracted this recent person, I didn't believe any of my magic was working. I had, I had a bad experience with a witch in town where I spent like, seven, eight years with this person, spending thousands and thousands of dollars. And let me tell you something, if you wanna to go to Patty and use her as a witch, <laughs> she is very cost efficient and very reliable. And she is not a person who's gonna take your money if she can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And she's not expensive. I got. I, I want her to raise her prices. Thank you. So cool. I went to this really famous witch in town and she all the A-listers went to her. And we all had talked about her amongst ourselves. And she took a lot of my money and it didn't work. And I started to doubt that I had the gift anymore. And so when I met Patty, it was because I watched her on YouTube with Laura DYI on her Instagram, on her YouTube with the spirit box where they contacted the spirits. And I said, oh, this person looks like she resonates with me. And then I tried her out and it was like, I was addicted. Now, the one thing I realized was sometimes spell work can take 90 days. At least one lunation cycle is 30 days. So if you're gonna wait for this, um, it's better for you not to put a time limit on it and just give it to the universe and let it go. Give it, you could keep doing spells over and over again. It's just like, don't take that one spell and go, God damn it. Don't no. wrestle it to the ground while it's not no. happening. It's that's like yeah. your souffle. If you open it up, it falls. Don't keep trust right. it. Walk so, away. So when I was doing the spell work, I met this guy and I said, eh, I don't feel like I'm, eh. and she's like, give it a chance. Give it a chance. I have a really good feeling. She was reading the tarot cards. She was using these things called the spirit rod, which we'll talk about in a minute or explain what that is. And so she kept feeling energy, energy really good with him. And she kept saying, you know, whether he's it, he will bring you a healing to bring you your true love. This was the major message of the moment. Um, and it, he came in. And then now he's working with her. So there's there's this whole little community of people that you're going to meet that are wonderful because once you meet someone, it may not be right. You might make a friend out of them. Don't throw them away so fast. No. It's very hard to find magical people that resonate the same frequency as you that you could share your stories and your magic with. It's sad that we don't have enough of us amongst you know and we witch, need witch more was, of us right and which has been for centuries witches have been a taboo. We were the healers from the beginning of time. And most of us were women. There were warlocks, but we got the, the men wanted to ostracize us because we had such higher knowledge and wisdom, and that's not good. So when you find someone and they don't work out romantically, keep them around because they've got some things they want to share with you. Yeah. And love is love. Love should be in your friendships as well as your romantic relationships. And sometimes there's karmic less. Yeah, karma. That, Let's that, talk about karma. That, but the way I'm using a karmic relationship, sometimes they are put there to reflect of the mirror of who they are for you to reflect for you to get your lessons whether it's them or not they have their lessons you have their lessons the universe god gods whoever put you together so you go oh i need to get ah this is what i learned from that and karma so what's about karma what is karma karma is cause and effect mm -hmm. you've done an action they did an action and then there's the karma between you now when you come incarnating into earth you have these contracts they're called soul contracts your mother your father your sister your brother even your dog. And so you come into earth and your romantic relationships are set up on this thing called the Akashic record. So if you are studying near death experiences right before someone dies, they have a life review. They see their entire life and they feel what the other people feel of what you gave to them, be it positive, be it negative. 
because we want to help learn compassion. The, go the goal is to be an earth school and learn compassion. So when you're meeting this romantic relationship, some people have a lot of appointments. Some people get one marriage, like my grandparents. But we're in a, a stage of divorce. You know, we're like divorce is 57 percent right now. I'm on number three. So right. hey. I know, but she got it right on number three. That's so right. did my mom. My mom was on number three. So that doesn't mean you're, you you fail. That means you're going through your Akashic list to mm -hmm. go through the karma. So the karma is the transgressions that we have done in past lives. Now, the Dharma is the creation of what we're going to bring to the future. So if you clean up your karma, you got great Dharma with them. You might want to come back in the next lifetime just for mission purposes for the universe to help the universe. Or maybe you just want to, they call it a vacation life. I'm tired from working so hard. I want a vacation life. I just want to be with my honey. And if you've ever met someone like life goes really easy and they've been unscathed, that's a vacation life. Not a lot of people <laughs> get that. That's not something that's a standard operating no. procedure. Because we learn from the hard stuff. We do. Right. As hard as it is, we learn from the hard stuff. I know. We're missing all sorts. Okay. okay. Let's do some questions. Okay. Wait. Hi, Patty Negri. I'm Zach. What is his name? McKennedy. I feel oddly attracted to you, though. Ghost Adventures with, with Zach, Zach begins. 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 Okay. You guys. Every day, I get dozens of people who are sure that they are a Zach Bagan soulmate. They are sure. He's a beautiful man. Ooh, that's a He's good one. a dear friend. I saw one good one. But he, he's got this charisma about him. Maybe you're really just attracted to him so you could learn more about the paranormal and things. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, let's not fill his magic. head up a little bit. He's I got know. a lot of guys. It's enough, right? He's, he's, got, he's got a lot he's of guys. He's got enough men. He's got a... Okay. So tell you what. Take the energy of Zach tonight. Download it play with it. Don't expect Zach. And you'll probably get a better version of you, Zach. Sorry, you, Zach, but that's yeah, true. You'll get a better version of what you want because it's that Because there's only one there's, Zach. There's, there's only one. Yeah. And and, and it's, it's this power. And you don't want Zach to, magic. you don't want Zach to hop, uh, you know, bed hopping. Okay. <laughs> someone asked a great question okay. and this is something I get all the time. How do you know if you have a curse on you? Okay. That's a great question. Lots of ways to know. Number one is you get tired all the time. Number two, things go wrong all the time. Things break Electric, all the time. Electronic things will break down. You'll hear voices in your house. You might hear people on the staircase. Um, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll have problems in money, problems in love, problems in health. Like shit doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It comes to a crashing halt. Okay. Now I know every person out there is going to go, that's me. I have a curse. Oh my God. No, everything no, 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 no. no, it isn't. It's, it's more than that. And 90% of the people that think they have a curse really don't. We create our own curses. We truly do. Like flipping off somebody on the freeway, they cut in front of them. You go, screw you. That's a baby curse. You're sending them energy. They're getting right. it back. Um, if you really do have a curse. It's not like, like a, it's not, wait, let's be clear. How many witches do you know are going to induce curses? Because good witches don't. So it's more like I had a fight with so-and-so. I sent that person negative energy, and I'm so angry. Yeah. I hate my boss. I want that boss to just jump off a cliff. And the more you gave that energy negativity, that's a curse. So that's it's not curse. like I did, you know, hocus pocus stuff to it. Right. So it's not like somebody's going, I am newt and whatever, yeah, whatever. That's not a curse. But it's yeah. really easy to get rid of. They only have power if you let them. Then you gotta be, and you power. have to be careful of the gypsies that you see on the road that want you to come in and give $5,000. I ran the Kenny Kingston Psychic Network and they would go on the line. I had to get a lot of them off because they were giving, you know, hey, give me five grand. I'll get removed the curse. No. So tell them about the lemon spell. Because yes. I think that's the most important. The most important. There's a beautiful, it's old Southern conjure. It's in my book, Old World Magic for the Modern Her book World. book is amazing, by the way. Ah, it's very simple. It's powerful. It's just, I, um, I might, I do. Okay. So anyway, all you need is a lemon and some salt. We know they're cleansing forever. Use lemon and cleansing. You need some, and you're going to get, all you need a saucer. It costs you that. And you're going to cut the lemon sour spell to sour fruit. You must go there because that's your suit. Into this lemon ever bound, all cures, all ills with salt and sour. And then you have four slices of lemon. Now you're going to salt it. And I don't have that part memorized. A sour salt or whatever that is. It's in the book. And then you're going to let it dry. And guess what? All the negativity curses, we'll real outside, or self-created, right? real or imagined. Yeah, set it. You can set it even in a window inside. If you live a cold place, you can't put it outside. Um so you would all how, the, many, how many days will it turn black in los angeles well you don't want it to if it turns black burn it or bury it and do it one more time yeah. you want it to dry if it turns black somebody's actively working against you but if it doesn't turn black and it just dries right. and even in southern sunny southern california it takes about a week burn it mine, or bury mine it. did not I, with the first time i worked with her we did it just to protect to see and nothing turned it just was yeah. completely white it was fine yeah it's fine and then you burn it or bury it now people some people go i'm urban and there's nowhere to you can't mm -hmm. 
you use a match, bury it. A good old dumpster is the kind of urban way to do it if you can't actually burn it or bury it. What but a, all the negativity gets thrown in it and, and you don't have to have the curse. What There's another thing that you can do is if you want to banish someone who's causing harm to you or your family. So talk about that with the with the freezing spell. Oh, freezing them out. This Again. is so easy. It's my favorite spell. I've been doing this for centuries, even before Patty, but go on. Um, yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's classic. It's freezing somebody out. You don't want to put negative energy to it. Again, because again, what you put out, you get back. Why live in a word of curses and hexes? Because you now live in a word where you could be cursed and hexed. Send them love or send or just block them. But if you need to block somebody, defensive magic, write their name or get a picture or just write their name or a name in a picture, put them in a freezer baggie, fill it up with water, stick it in the freezer, but claim, okay, they cannot hurt me right. or my family or my whatever that is, my business, my work. You're not freezing them out. You're not trying You're not to hurt them. You're not asking for them to be harmed. To be careful of that. Do not ask them to be harmed. No. Just say, they have stepped out of my family, my auric field, my home, my docile, my work, because a lot of the works people are like that, and that they are now on ice. They cannot and, hurt me. And you make a little freezer. And it works. It it's works. like that. It but like, here's the thing in love. Your ex left you for another girlfriend. You're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to remove her from the one you want. So take that out of your mind. Can you say she's not harming you? Yes. You can say like, he's dating her and he's hearing nasty comments about me. Okay. He's hearing negativity about me through her. She's putting me down. Like maybe you're in the same circle. You're in college together. You live in the same dorm, whatever. You can say, I don't want her talking about me. I don't want her harming his image of what we had. That's different. Be yeah. careful of that. Be careful of that. Because you never want to go through these spells you see online. Oh, get your ex back and remove the girlfriend. Because that's going to come back to you. Because if you, I did that once. I got to talk about my Santa Terra story. Please. So back in Florida, I was going to a very famous Santero. Actually, J-Lo, I heard goes. We'll see if that's true. And I went downtown. And my spiritual teacher was super highly involved like Patty. She's dead now. God bless your soul, Louise. And she said, I don't think you should go to the Santero. And I went to the Santero and I said, my ex-boyfriend and I broke up. He's got a new girlfriend. I want him back. I've only done this once in my life. I've never done this again because I learned my lesson. So in 24 hours, I did this thing called the tuna fish spell. And the Santero did it with me and he came back in 24 hours. That's how powerful he was. And he came back with great sex. We were swimming along. And then all of a sudden, he left me again for her. Now I was devastated. I was crying my eyes out. I was miserable. And my teacher is like, I taught you a lesson. You never change anyone's will. And I had studied the Kabbalah. I, you know, I'm Jewish. Uh, I don't practice, but I've studied higher knowledge. And I know you're not supposed to do that, but I really was addicted to him. So I was sexually addicted to him. I call him catnip sex in my book, uh -huh. Become Your Own Matchmaker, if you read my book. And during that process, I was so in a state of obsession that I went back to my teacher and said, unobsess me from him. Yes. And it did. It worked in 24 hours. I, I was unobsessed. She worked her magic on me to pull out the darkness in me because I would have done anything to get him back. So if you're in that place, that's not a place you want to be. You want to find your true love for the highest good that sees you as the one and you don't have to steal them from anybody else. This whole business of stealing people on YouTube, I am ashamed of the community that's doing this right now. Yeah. It's wrong. And you can do something, you control other people. That means you live in a world where you can be controlled. You don't want somebody controlling you, making you fall in love with the person you hate down the street. Right. You don't want that. And plus uh, so often you could make, say it's Bob, Bob fall in love with you, but it would be like, all of a sudden, it'd and be the Bob's stalker gonna, that you hate, I mean, and, and they're right, obsessed, and right. you're obsessed. And, and, and the other thing is, for the SPs, for the people doing law of attraction, a specific person, that's a lot of work. Every day, you've got to go to bat and keep getting that alignment set up so that person loves you. What about the person that loves you without doing all that? Yeah. Because that's what you're looking for. You're not looking for the person you're going to steal from someone else. you got to go in every day. It's like grudge work. Who wants to do that? I think that's ridiculous. How about... You can use that person's image and likeness and the, the way they make me feel. So we'll talk about something that happened to me yesterday that's also really good. So I have a law of attraction coach named Ines Varelli, and you can see her on YouTube. She's amazing. She's from England. She's Australian, lives in England. And she said to me, um, I was doing a healing and my ex, my first fiance came up and I was madly in love with him. He was a recovering alcoholic. It didn't work out. My dad was an alcoholic. So we had issues. So I broke up with him in my 30s. It was my last chance really to get pregnant and have a family. It was really a horrible time. And I moved to California right after that. And so he came back 10 years later, but he was married. 
And I said, I, I, I can't do this. This is, doesn't feel clean. It's not congruent. I'm more of integrity. But I never got over that pain. And I was doing a healing this week and the pain surfaced. So she said, flip the script. What was the most wonderful moment of your life? And it was the day that my ex, Peter, told me he loved me on my second date and he wanted to marry me. So she said, take that feeling and use that in your magic and your law of attraction and stay in that cone of energy because you knew he loved you and he loved you. In fact, the second night that I slept with him, I know I broke my rules, girls, don't blame me. But I mean, I got engaged. So it's like I didn't really break my rules. So he said, we, I, I went out of my body in the Kundalini, for those who know the Kundalini and the Serpent Chakra. And I went out of my body and I was turning blue from the orgasm. And he pushed me out of the window to get me to breathe. He literally had to do CPR on me because wow. the Kundalini rose wow. so high. I saw myself making love. It was total astral projection. And after it was over, I realized that love was so pure in the moment because the Kundalini cannot raise unless two individuals are equally in love or more of each other. So I now use that in my workshop for those who do Abraham and all that stuff. I do that in my workshop because that love is so pure. So you can take that person as the catalyst when you're visualizing and manifesting and using your magic. Like if I were going to do a candle spell, I might take the candle, blow into it and see Peter's energy. And then I would use that as a way to summon the universe to say, I want this equal or better. I want equal or more. I want it for the highest good. So you can actually, because remember, we have to get into the feeling place for magic to work. So you need that feeling. It's harder for the person who has never had the relationship to manifest a relationship because they don't know how to feel in a relationship. Right. So it's, again, emotion, passion, feeling is what drives everything. Is what drives everything. It's what makes the world go around, what we are seeing. I know. Oh, thank you. Uh, we two patties. We don't know which one I you're know, talking about. We don't know which one you're talking oh, about, but patty, thank you. Patty. Thank oh, you, Dad. Um, go, go, go. Oh. They want to hear more spell stuff. Okay, we're going to go into candle. Let's do a candle working because candles, everybody can get candles. Cheers. It'll take time in between eating chocolate and champagne. So, okay, candles. Get yourself a candle, any kind of a candle, um, beautiful candles. There's some beautiful candle makers out there or inexpensive candles. Do with what you can do. It's okay. These are called seven day candles. They don't last seven days. But you get the grocery store, by the way. Yeah, you can get these at the grocery store. I'm going to get the store. Florida one. Um, so let's say you want to do a love spell of some sort. Again, what this is bringing in is all the elements. We've got the fire. We've got the earth. We've got the air. What is burning? And water, we're going to put our breath and we're going to put some oils into it. You want to talk about this? Yeah. So this is something you get at like some of the psychic stores. Mm -hmm. It's called Florida water. So sometimes you get a candle from the grocery store or from psychic store and you don't know if it's been hex, tainted, magic, whatever on it. So you want to clean it. So you take it out like this and you just take a little paper towel. And I know some of this, for those of those who are really advanced, I know you, okay. this is immaturity. It's like, you know, we're like starting at ground level, but that's we okay. don't know who you are. So that's why. And you just wipe it down and you just wipe it out and then you're ready to go. Yeah. yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Clear it and clean. You can get this at the Latin uh, grocery stores, by the way. They have them everywhere. Yeah. You can get it. It's, it's Florida water. water. It's actually a cheap, weird kind of a cologne perfume that's been used in magic because in olden days and everybody in the, you can get it at Botanica's. They worked with what they had, and we put so much or... magic into it. So I, I have matcha somewhere, but I got all right. So say we want to we want to do a love candle. We want to bring now again. White works for everything because it's pure. Red is really good for love, especially at Valentine's Day. Pink is the sweet love. Red is the passion love. Both work. But now say if for you, green is love. Use green. Go with what your truth is. The truth is within it. They're calling me Patty too. <laughs> You're Patty. They're but calling me. It's so cute because they go, Patty too. Great to see you. Like, it's really funny. Patty, okay. I know. It, it, Patty and Patty, Patty is Patty not too. that common of a name. So that's what's And so we funny. spell our names the, the exact same. same way. Is that weird? And we're you both could, Patricia. And you can hardly tell us apart. <laughs> right. I'm just the brunette. Yeah, it's, it's like it. So anyway, so say you want to do, do love. So again, work. Um, mind, body, spirit also means... Um, creation working dispatch. So think the thing, whether you, oh, I want to do it on Friday because it's love, or I want to do it now because I need it now. Um, I always suggest with magic, you do it on the waxing moon or full moon. I'm going to show them the, the clear versus the dark. The, the waxing moon or full moon because you're adding into it. You do like diet smells and quit smoking spells on the, on the, the waning moon when you want to let go of things, but love you want to bring in. Um, 
Yeah, so we, yeah, we're gonna get that. So say you want to do a very simple spell. Um, again, so let's we have white and we want to do red. Uh, pink, you, pink, 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 pink. So you say if you want to do a carving spell, that's great, but you can't carve this kind of spell. But what you have is a sharpie, a good old Here fashioned go. sharpie. That's a purple. Now I'll take red and you take purple. Okay. Okay. Say so again. Try not to do it on real people. Do it on. I want somebody who's funny and light and curly right. hair or straight so, hair. So you're writing everything you want in a mate. So you want marriage, let's say. So, so happy love. marriage. Happy marriage. Uh, great sex. Great sex. sex. Lots of money. Yes. Generous. Yes. Um, Sweet. Funny. Maybe funny. I'm gonna do funny. Funny. That's a good one. Um, whatever it is. Like kind. Athletic. Kind. athletic. Athletic. So you're putting all your thoughts. Now you oh. can't just sit here and go funny, athletic, sexy. That's nothing. You want to put your passion into it. You want sweat beating down your head. You want you Brad want fucking Pitt is you what want, you want. Yeah, you want Brad fucking Pitt. <laughs> so again, so you were, or we're some might want George what, Clooney. What, I don't know. <laughs> whatever, whatever. You're, so again, you're doing this stuff. Now you've got these writings on it. You're putting your energy into it. Now, another thing to do, I do work with a lot of herbs and oils. If you have stuff, work it. Even olive oil in your kitchen is amazing. You know, the best thing for love that? and sex. No, we were good. Okay. With the best thing for, for that you have in your kitchen right now, Cinnamon is spicy, sexy, passion. What if you want to sprinkle a little cinnamon on top of the candle? Um, rose petals, again, break up some rose petals. Highest vibration, always mean love. Um, lavender, that sweet love that you're going to do. I also work with a lot of oils. Again, you could buy at Botanicas, you can make your own oil, rose oil, lavender oil. Um, dragon's blood increases everything. Wait, where's night. come to me? Because that's the best. Come to me. We have come to me oil. So come to me stuff, she's like powder and oil. For some reason, that works like magic. I mean, like fast. And now yeah. if you want to work your candle, again, if, if this was not in a glass candle, you would carve your candle. I've written mine. So she's written mine? hers. So maybe you want to put the little oil in to it so you can you want to get that you know just like in, in witchcraft you've got the chalice and the knife and you're you're stabbing it to represent so wait a second thing. you gotta like so okay, I'll here hold it. we are no. going to show wait let's hold it up a little bit right here so i want to make a hole so i'm gonna like whoa, make a little hole this was my dowsing rod and maybe i want to pour a little oil into this again you're just... seeing the love yeah do into yours what you are doing that's easy. That was it's easy. Easy, easy. So again, you want to take a little. This is hot witch oil because because you want to be a hot witch. Okay. Yeah, totally. If you're gonna do love, you want passion. Put a little bit. Nothing worse than getting a lover and he doesn't know how to get it up, right? Exactly. So all right. Now another thing you want to you want to really wake up your witch. So take a little on your fingers. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now you want to wake up the wick. You want to stroke. Like, so for those who love to give a blowjob or a hand job, this is what you're doing. Stroke it up. I'm one. getting a little dirty here. Get it dirty. Up. up. Three times. Three is the magic number. Stroke it. Stroke it. Feel that love. Feel that passion. Feel this love being brought to you at your front door or through that app or whatever. And like that visualize, is. like as you're doing it, visualize the man coming through the front door with a dozen or two dozen roses for, look, it's Valentine's Day on Monday. Let's get this shit going yes, here. Yes. You want that man over the weekend before Super Bowl Sunday. Let's go. Yes, yes. Yeah. Do it. You never know. Maybe it's that pizza delivery guy. You don't know <laughs> who that is. So, okay. So you want to do it. Now you've got this candle. What you have creation we've done the creation yeah. of what we, we want well. and the working now you want to put your whenever you can speak out loud speak out loud because remember your words have power sound has power that's why you sing that's why you chant so bring me the love of my life every vowel every consonant is egyptian magic it's work so but now we also want to our life blow into it because our life force without our breath we have we want to blow into it And sometimes you want to almost spit. Our moisture on our breath is our free will. That's why some cultures spit like, oh, what a pretty baby. So I, see that? You're putting your life force into this beautiful candle. So you're seeing this love. You're seeing this beautiful love that you are creating. So she puts her passion into these. She's good. For those who, for those who wanted the X back, focus. Focus him walking through that door. Two dozen roses in hand, a box of chocolates. A box from Tiffany. Let's go. And remember, it's not that you're tr changing their will. You have them see the truth. Ha have the universe open doors for you. Give you opportunities. To. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> and you There's really something want to else we tell you. They're telling you about afterwards. It's really Bathroom good. magic is amazing. You want love? Carve hearts on your soap. Carve hearts. Write the word love. Even when it wears down, you're charging it. Yeah. If you use liquid soap, write it with a sharpie on. So you're not just doing a bath. You're doing a love bath. Put it on your shampoo, on the bottles, on the. You are doing love conditioner. Rose water is like the secret of all secrets for your skincare. So when you're putting rose water out, imagine the guy coming to you because that is a vibrational frequency of love. So you're actually spraying your face, cleansing it, and also bringing love in at the same time. It's yes. double the pleasure, double the fun. And remember, roses are the, the highest vibration of all flowers, the most sacred, the most sacred of all flowers, and they are the love flower. So how perfect. So now you've got this ready, you've got to really build it. So now is the dispatch, which it would be that, that you could chant into it, or you could do a mo right. love here, love now, love come to me. Should for we do a chant together? Yes, let's do that. Okay, you guys, get your candles ready if you have your candles. For those who don't have candles, is there something, one of Hold one on. of the people said that they don't have a candle. What could they do today if they don't have a candle? Do something else, just grab anything, even grab a pen, and then you could put that energy into something, just practice with us again you could do this on your own so get whatever you have like like remember it's your word is your wand as Florence Shen would say so it's like you're commanding the universe to heal you to bring true love in to manifest quickly I don't like slow manifestations I'm all I, I'm impatient I'm a double Gemini She's a speedy so girl. like I like everything fast so I don't if it goes too slow I lose interest so Ask the universe, say, you know, ask your guides, ask your master angels, all of them to come in and just open the gates. You want to open the gates. You want to have all roads open. So if you don't have a candle, just talk to yourself. Yeah, you don't have to. Remember, these are just conduits. Like they're not going to change the magic because the magic is in you. It's not so, in the candle. Yeah, it's in you. Up, hold up your hand. Breathe into your hand. And then we're going to, let's do love here, love now, love come to okay, me. Okay, let's start. Okay. okay ready? Go. Okay. No. Love here, love now, love come to me. Feel it. Love here, love now, love come to me. Love here, love now, love come to me. Love here, love now, love come to me. And then shoot it out into the universe. So, so mode it be. So mode it be. And you can say things like, by the power of three times three, this spell bound round shall be as I do will it. So shall it be. Or make it up or yourself. And you're sending it out. Now you're going to light it. Now the one thing about a magical candle, um, you don't ever blow out a magical candle. Right. You could you could leave it growing, going for straight. But if you don't, a lot of people don't leave candles. Yes. Okay, like now it. here's the secret. You can put it in the sink or you can put it in your bathtub. Do not leave the house. The number one rule of all fires, and I dated a 9-11 firefighter, is that they let the candles burn and the candles burn down the house. So you want to put it into the sink or into the bathtub. Or a big that's pot it. On the, a big that's pot it. with okay? water. Right. So just know that it's got to be in like that kind of a container because it blows out, it blows out. If it blows out, don't panic. Mine did today. I had a lift Hikate. I, did a, I do a Hikate candle every week and it went out. You just light it again it went, and it was perfect. Okay. Now, sometimes a what spell you want to light it for a few minutes every day, like my diet spell. And again, you get you how you want to put it out between maybe ten minutes a day. You want to think about that love. Right. You snuff it out. Use a candle snuffer, or you lick your fingers and you do it, or you use a put a plate over don't it. Ruin your nails. Um, don't ruin your nails. <laughs> but that leaves the wick hungry for you to relight it the next day. Because sometimes you need do a full moon cycle, as you guys. Um, the two weeks you can put crystals on it. You can put a powder on it. There's love oils. powder, herbs, oil. So we're going to talk about what's yes. the weather report on love. So, yes. so candle is a weather report. Is the magic working? Cause you don't want to have doubt. Remember doubt kills the magic. So this is, these are two of my candles I've done on the last two weeks and it's perfectly clear. They're yes. white candles. They came out amazing. So what I was working on worked. Okay. Now let's show you when it doesn't work or it's resistance. resistance. So there's resistance. So this, so this is a candle I did for the friend that I told you about. He needed money. We have never in the history, and if anybody's a witch out there who's seen this, please DM us because we're shocked about this. The candle went completely black. That was clear. That was clear. I've seen them get a little dark and smoky. Black. That's okay, great. now we did it again, and we added more, more stuff, and I did more of a hand tie situation. The top is black. The bottom is white. So this person is fighting its own um, higher good. 
And then he's got a lot of resistance. This is he. He's got a lot of resistance where he's not really in his soul mission because when you're in your soul mission, the candles go clear. So I'll show you Hakate's candle. For those who love Hakate, I did this. So Patty taught me how to write like her emblem, which is right there. See that? If you can see that really close up. And this is perfectly clear. Perfect. And one of the ways you know it's working is the candle will burn down more than seven days. It'll go like in three days. And you'll be like, what? That candle burn out really fast because that means the magic's working. Then you gotta let it go. You can't take score. Hey, he didn't come to my house to, you know, to come back. He didn't come back to me, my ex. So you have to give it a 30 day lunar cycle before you do it again. Yeah, yeah. Give it a hope because again, it's like opening the oven, the souffle falls. The you there is not really good time and space on the other side in the ether. No. This is our creation. Time and space is what we humans do to But to That land. doesn't mean you get like, for instance, if you want your ex back, I would not say not date. Let's talk about the dating no, aspect date. of it. So from the matchmaker perspective, I would say you want love by Tuesday, then you got to keep dating. You can't take yourself out of the game to be of the ultimate faith that he's going to come back because you don't know if there's a better person for you. You're not psychic. You don't know if there's someone better for you out there. And the universe is the ultimate matchmaker. So they might have somebody better and go, oh, you like, you like John? I got Steve. Steve's better. You're going to like Steve even better. So you want to keep moving. Now, if John comes back, you would probably negotiate better terms because you don't want to go through the same experience you went last time because John may not have changed his personality. John might be the same person. And you're like, God damn it. That's why we broke up in the first place. Right. So you want to make sure that you are in the highest integrity and congruent to your desire that no matter what happens, I want the best thing for me. I'm not going back because I'm an obsession. You can't be an obsession and expect no, to get a better result. Then you're needy, needy, needy. Right. Who wants to go back to somebody needy? Date. And plus you're telling the universe, deity, God, whatever. Mm. I am, I'm love begets like, love. So I am dating. I'm going on the apps. I'm going out to people. Right. I'm doing speed dating. So Just, you, you would make your altar like that. You would make a, like, there, you know, I teach a lot of my clients to make a love altar. Yes. Which is got like all their favorite deities, whether it's Athena, Aphrodite or Hecate like me. And then I basically put all the love stuff on it. I put roses on it every week. I'm a big rose buyer every week, pink or red. Um, do you want to do yellow? Because yellow is friendship unless you're doing a friendship spell. Right. And then you just keep adding stuff to it. Chocolate, you know, putting wine out for your dragon or you want to put Red Bull like I do. Like you want to you want to make it so like this is my altar and you clean it every week and you pray to it and you get in, you get into it like a, a state of vibration. Cause that's where really you're trying to raise your vibration. Right. And love begets love. Be romantic at home. Look around your house, your apartment, whatever. Is there room for somebody else? Can you bring some, whether you're going to bring them or not, can you bring somebody to your bedroom right now? Or is it like, Oh no, I can't bring. Is there room in your closet for somebody? If there's not room in your bedroom, if it's not, it's not going to happen. Clean your bedroom. Oh, yeah. That's feng shui. So the number one make, thing that you have can do, room in your closet, right, your right side of or left side of your bed that you don't use, you want to make for your mate, gay, straight, pink polka dot. It doesn't matter. You just want to make sure like they have an eye pillow in there. Maybe they got condoms in there, like whatever you need to be in there. Yeah. And then you give half of your closet away. Mm -hmm. That's a big feng shui because cluttered houses do not get the guy or the girl. No. And be rom romance begets romance. Even if you're sitting home by yourself mm -hmm. and you're eating a lean cuisine, light a candle, be romantic, put on some music, step away from the t-shirt, right. get out of your sweats once in a while, go out, right. put on a we, glamour. We, we, talk about, we talk about a glamour spell. So in a glamour spell, when we're doing something because you don't feel beautiful, you don't feel sexy. We've been in COVID for two years. A lot of us have eaten bad food, haven't exercised, and we haven't had sex in two years. Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, yeah. Right. I'm one of them. So um, to do a glamour spell, you really got to look beautiful to feel beautiful. So you would look in the mirror and you would feel beautiful and see yourself as beautiful. That's a really big deal. Charm that your you mirrors. can't look in sweatpants and expect like the hot guy's going to show up to you. And charm your mirrors. Let yourself see it. Because we're the hardest on ourselves always. That you see your true beauty. Right. Whatever is every Like mirror, mirror on the wall. Let me see this beautiful person with inside me. Now, if you are out in your sweats, putting on a glamour, it's like, oh my God. And you're running into your ex or somebody like. That's okay. That's okay. Put on a glamour. Energy. Your energy is going to speak just as loud. Yeah, just, just imagine, imagine that he beautiful. sees They're not you. They're not going to see it. You got no, you got no makeup on. On, your hair's falling apart. You just came from the gym. Imagine that he sees you as the most beautiful woman in the world or beautiful man in the world, whatever, you're whatever your type it. you're getting. There's also this thing that I do called the whispering 
technique. I call it the witch's whisper. I nicknamed it. It's good. It's like really good. And it works like I taught, um, I was doing a photo shoot the other day and I did taught everybody on set to do this and everybody's, it worked. So you have a specific person you want to call you or contact you. It could be a best friend, long lost lover to your ex and they're not calling you. So calling is relative. We're texting, we're DMing, we're YouTubing, we're whatevering, you know? It's one of those things. So you put your hands between your, your mouth, you would face, you would face north. So you take the phone, you take your phone out, and there's a compass in your phone. So where north is, you face north. And you basically whisper into that person. But before you do it into their ears, you go, you blow three times like and then you whisper what you want to say, like, call Patty, call Patty, tell her she's beautiful, tell her she'll love her. And you whisper into them. Three things will happen. Either that person's going to push you away and go, I will. You're going to hear I am, a words, or you're just going to get a feeling in your body. They felt you, they sensed you. When you get that feeling, you let it go. And you can keep doing it throughout the day until they do it. And they will eventually call. Yeah. I have never seen it not work within 24 hours. Ever. No, it always Ever. works. And it's you have to it. know it works. So I know sometimes when I don't want to talk to someone and I don't want to chase them and maybe they're busy, I'll do that and they'll call me. It works every time. How are we doing? Oh you my God, I think we're gone over time. Oh, okay. Well, it's okay. okay. It's okay. You we guys can do another guys one. Okay. If you like this, let us know. If, um, and if, if you want us to do other stuff, like, you know, let us know. If you like it, want a patty and patty? Patty, patty, patty milk sandwich. Patty, <laughs> patty. Love patty. We will come back and do this, you guys. The best of the best. Patty Sanger. Oh, God, She's I love amazing. you. I she love you. She's my teacher. This is my teacher. And I she might teaches share, me I too. might share with you. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so you guys, come back. Patty Sanger. Follow her. All the social medias, yeah. websites love go for her me patty negri social media and don't the give up on valentine's day it's just a day it does it's not your report card for your love life it mm -hmm. comes every year if you don't have someone this this valentine's just means you gotta work on yourself that's all work on yourself or go out with friends or go talk to some yeah neighbor go out have a fun time with a girlfriend like, or make something. it valentine's day somebody yeah, working valentine's absolutely. day just like you don't need to feel sorry for yourself just because they're going to, your lover is going to come to somebody who's happy and fulfilled and not needing somebody. You want somebody. You don't have to need somebody. Yeah. Cool. Everybody so, good? Everybody good? It okay, is good. Happy Valentine's happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Mwah. Love is everywhere. Bye. Bye. Okay, cool. That was fun.